Hello all, I'm Gunam Adivanan from Officers IAS Academy. Friends, we are coming up with an exclusive live quiz program based on current affairs targeting 2024 prelims on a weekly basis. So every Saturday at 6 p.m. in our Officers Path channel, we will be coming up with this live quiz program. So how to participate? So for which you have to install an mobile application. So go to uh, either uh, App Store or the Google Play Store to download this application named Kahoot. Kahoot application. Download and install it. Right. So every Saturday at 6 p.m. in the live video, I will be giving you a seven digit pin. So you have to enter that seven digit pin in your installed application. In that Kahoot application, you have to enter that seven digit pin. Or we will give you a QR code if you are not interested in installing the application. You can scan the QR code in the web browser. You can open the page, web page. In that you can enter this seven digit pin number and you can participate in this quiz program. So once you enter the seven digit number, the application will ask you to give a username. So you have to give your username followed by your username please give your last four digits of your mobile phone number for example my username is guna8990 the last four digits of my phone number so like that you can create your own username that's all you are ready to participate in the quiz so in the live video so in the live video i will be showing you the question the question will be followed by four options as usual a b c d the four options will have a color code right so option a red color option b blue color option c green color option d yellow color so the four options will have four different color codes so in your mobile phone you have installed the kahoot application right so the kahoot application in your phone in your device it will show you four colored box only four colored box only in the video which you are watching in that live video i will give you the question followed by that four option i will be giving you the four option will have a color code right so if you are going to choose a as the right answer then A has red color, then in your mobile phone you will have a red colored box, you have to choose that, that's all. The answer which you have chosen is correct and if you have chosen that quickly, for every question we will give you 60 seconds. Assume that I am choosing A, A is the right answer and I am choosing within 20 seconds, within 10 seconds, based on how quickly I choose the question, I have to choose the correct one. And I have to choose it as early as possible. So the one who is choosing at the earliest will be given more points. So if I am choosing in 20 seconds, I will be given more points. If someone is choosing at 30 seconds, then relatively lesser points. Right? So this is how the quiz will work. So at the end of the uh, program, we will show you the leaderboard. Between the questions also, I will show you the leaderboard. At the end, I will show you the final leaderboard. The one with more number of points will be given a certificate, right? The idea of the quiz program is to provide you a real time experience of solving the questions along with that competitive environment, right? I hope this program adds more value to your preparation. So along with this, we have um, a daily uh, current type of settler series daily answer rating initiative. So all these initiatives will give you a competitive edge in your 2024 prelims as well as mains. Right? I hope this adds more value to your preparation. So see you in the quiz. Till then, bye. Take care. Okay. Uh, good evening, people. Uh, so today we'll be in uh dealing with the exclusive economic quiz along with the other general questions too. So you can join the quiz via the Kahoot app or by, by scanning the QR code and the game pin would be 1810809. I repeat 1810809. So today we will be dealing in all 15 questions and each question followed by four different options will be available to you and you can choose the correct answer. Fine, let us uh, get into the first question. Uh, 
Okay, the first question is Okay, consider the following statements about small finance banks. Statement 1 SFPs uh, primarily undertake basic banking activities to unserved and underserved sections. They are subject to all prudential norms and regulations of RBA as applicable to existing commercial banks. Small finance banks function only in rural areas of the country. And the options are only one, only two, all three and none. Okay, time is almost half up. Fine, uh, majority of uh, you have answered correctly. The answer is B. Uh, some of you have answered A. I don't know why. See, maybe all of you are confused with the second statement. They are subject to all prudential norms and regulations of RB. Yes. They are also even subject to priority sector lending to an extent that they have to lend 75% of the loan to priority sector lending. Then what is the use of the small finance bank? See, they are for giving small, small loans. Our normal commercial banks, they can give small as well as large loans. But these small finance banks, they are mandated that at least 50% of their loan should be small loans. Small loans definition means uh, those loans should be within 25 lakhs. So they are exclusively created to give small, small loans, not to ordinary people who require small quantity of loans. It is uh, exclusively catered for those people and um, it is subjected to everything that normal scheduled commercial bank would be subjected to. So yes, uh, another statement, you know, the third statement is wrong. It can cater to both rural as well as urban area. There is no geographical restrictions. Good. Let's see the leaderboard. Fine. Uh, the first is Ananti followed by Mani, Adi, Kavya and Pragatish. Good. Let's get into the second question. Which uh, consider the following countries, Egypt, Sudan, Oman, Jordan, Eritrea. Which of the countries mentioned above share their border with the Red Sea? Okay, the time is almost going to get over. Yeah. Okay, majority have answered it correctly. I don't know why people got confused that Jordan is bordered with Red Sea. I don't know. And some have answered all five. Uh, see, uh, it, there is general confusion between Red Sea and Persian Gulf. You know, they are on like Persian Gulf is above and Red Sea is down. So have clear cut idea and while you are reading Red Sea, first you have to know the countries bordering it. Second, you have to know the placements of Gulf of Aqaba and Gulf of Aden. So that much is uh, enough about uh, Red Sea countries bordering and the Gulfs present in Red Sea. The same thing applies to Persian Gulf also. So Oman and all is bordering Persian Gulf. Amen is bordering Red Sea. So have a clear cut idea while studying. Good, uh, there is nothing much about Red Sea. This much is enough even if you are reading Red Sea otherwise. Let's move into the next question. Uh, before that, we will see the leaderboard. Good, Adi is stopping, followed by Shri Sai, Pragadish, Shankari and Shruti. Let's move into the next question. Energy Efficiency Services Limited is a joint venture of public sector undertakings under A. Ministry of Power, B. Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, 
C. Ministry of Heavy Industry and Public Enterprises and D. None of the above. Time is up and the answer is Ministry of Power. People have got confused with Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. No, the answer is Ministry of Power. Actually, comparatively an easy guesswork uh, question also. Fine, it's Ministry of Power, but you should know that it implements schemes of Ministry of New and Renewable Energy also. It is not exclusively limited to Ministry of Power, even other ministries if needed. It is just uh, created by Ministry of Power. It implements various schemes. Uh, uh, relating to energy efficiency, energy conservation. It was created to implement the national action plan on climate change. This much is enough. You need not get into the details of what scheme it implements, how it implements and all. This much is enough for energy efficiency services. Good. Let us see the leaderboard. Okay. Adi, Pragatish, Mukil, Deepa, Karan, Sridhar. Okay. You guys have studied this. Good. Yeah. Let us move into the next question. Consider the following statements about sustainable development goals. 1. SDGs are universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet and improve the lives and prospects of everyone everywhere. Second, SDGs are legally binding on the countries. Which of the statements given above are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2, neither 1 nor 2. Time is going to be up. Yes, it is. So the answer is just one. Uh, see, if SDGs are going to be legally binding, then India would have ratified laws in a much uh, greater pace. Now we have so many laws uh, to implement SDG, no doubt. But the pace would be much faster. Same applies to the global countries. It is not a legally binding one. Same thing applies to nationally determined con uh, contributions under Paris uh, climate change pact that is also not legally binding the general trend is nowadays many climate change uh, related stuff are not legally binding with the exception of very few uh, unless and until the word protocol comes the chances of it being legally binding is very less kigali amendment montreal protocol those are legally binding uh, sdg ndc they are not legally binding so just have a fair idea of which one are legally binding, which one are not. You know, UPSC asks questions on these line almost every prelims. Good, let us see the leaderboard. Good Adi. Adi tops followed by Pragadish, Mukil, Sridhar and Deepa Karan. Let us get into the next question. Fine. The government of India has decided to establish PM Mitra Parks with the main objective of A. To modernize the food processing sector to increase the level of processing. B. To create employment opportunities for the youth by promoting the IT, ITES industry in smaller cities. C. To transform India into a global manufacturing hub with a focus on indigenously designed, developed and manufactured weapon systems and D to create a world class infrastructure for the integration of different processes involved in the textile industry. Done. Time is up and it is comparatively an easy scheme. It has been mentioned in 2-3 budgets. It is now mentioned in economic survey. Everything. The answer is D. Textile parks. So these are huge parks. Uh, they provide all facilities like uh, how waste disposal, common electricity and dyeing, tying, everything at one place. So that even a small textile, in the textile industry can sustain and make profits. So that is the idea of these mega parks. Why should we create mega parks? So that all amenities are available to the industry at one place. So they can cut out on the input cost. That is the main objective and Mitra is particularly for the textile industry. Good. Uh, Let us see the leaderboard. Yeah, again, Adi tops followed by Pragati, Sridhar, Mani and YP. Fine, let us get into the next question. Next one should be a comparatively easy one. Yes, it is. The Gulf of Manar Marai National Park which serves as an ideal feeding ground for Dugong Dugon. 
is located in the state of A Kerala, B Tamil Nadu, C Gujarat and D Rajasthan. It is like someone ought to answer this question basics. Time is up. Answer is Tamil Nadu. I don't know there are seven people who have answered Gujarat. I don't know how come Gujarat, maybe Gulf of Kutch, Gulf of Manar got confused with the word Gulf. It's Gulf of Manar. It is like near Rameshwaram and River Tamarabarani drains into it and the flagship species of this uh, marine, uh, this is uh, Dugong Dugon. In other words, it's also called as the sea cow. It is a herbivore animal. It eats only seagrass. It's like a cow on land. It's like cow in sea. You can find it here. So, um, uh, it's not endemic to this place, but you can find it here. It's a flagship species. River Tamarabarani drains into Gulf of Manar. Know everything possible about Gulf of Manar. Uh, such a fragile ecosystem constantly in use for one thing or the else. So, you ought to know. If you are going to read environment, you ought to know about Gulf of Manar. That is the significance of that reserve. Good. Let us see the leaderboard. <coughs> Adi, Pragadish, Mani, Sujit and Sridhar. Fine guys, let us move into the next question. Uh, with reference to the UN Human Rights Council, consider the following statements. 1. It is an intergovernmental body with the United Nations system made up of all members of the UN. 2. It is responsible for the promotion and protection of all human rights around the globe, which is the correct one. 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2, neither 1 nor 2. Okay, uh, answer is B2 only, but many of you have answered both 1 and 2. See, uh, when it comes to UN organs, uh, the thing is that uh, specialized agencies, all the members of United Nations are mostly not all, members of all the specialized agencies. Some members will not be interested in joining that. No common sense, not everybody won't be joining that. Mostly it is only the General Assembly, UN General Assembly that has all the members of the UN. Apart from that, be it Security Council, be it Maritime Organization, be it UNHR, none of it have all the members of UN. So anywhere if all the members of UN, if this word comes, you ought to be cautious. You have to check whether it is feasible or not. If just with common sense, you can solve most of the questions in UPSC prelims. You need not have inherent knowledge about it also in some cases. Fine. Let us see the leaderboard. The answer is only B. Let us see the leaderboard. Good. Topper is Pragadish followed by Adi followed by Mani, Sujit and Sridhar. Fine. Let us get into the next question. With reference to the National Skill Development Corporation, consider the following statement. NSDC is a not-for-profit public limited company. 2. NSDC acts as a catalyst in skill development by providing funding to enterprises, companies and organizations that provide skill training. Options are 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2, neither 1 nor 2. Good, many of you have answered it correctly. The answer is C, both 1 and 2. Of course, it is a public limited company, not for profit public limited company and it is created by Ministry of Finance. That part you should know. But the major shareholder is Ministry of Skill Development. Created by Ministry of Finance, the shareholder is Ministry of Skill Development. When they deal with anything, training, uh, skill certificates, uh, empowering the youth, everything is uh, dealt by NSDC. They are also fund providers. They provide fund for such schemes. So, this much you ought to know about it. And you can go into the shareholding percentage, 49%, 51%, why ministry created it. Of those sorts, you can just Google and see. That much will do. Let us see the leaderboard. Good. Okay, uh, not nothing, not much change. Uh, Topper is Pragadish followed by Adi, Mani, Sujit and Paul. Let us get into the next question. 
Okay, the Nai Roshni scheme is an initiative of A. Ministry of Women and Child Development B. Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change C. Ministry of Education and D. Ministry of Minority Affairs Time is almost going to be up. It's up. Answer is D, Ministry of Minority Affairs. With just the name Roshini, all of us would have assumed it to be Ministry of Women and Child Development. But uh, no, that is the catch phrase here. It is Ministry of Minority Affairs. Uh, the scheme is aimed to, uh, you know, be, for the betterment of minority women particularly. You know, teaching them digital literacy, teaching them finance literacy. Who will teach them means uh, designated NGOs will teach them. And for that, the ministry will uh, provide fund. So that is the thing, you know, how to use GPay, uh, how to write a check, uh, how to deposit a check, how to withdraw from bank, these basic stuff. You know, many women don't know, they are just confined to the house. So the scheme is aim aimed to empower the minority women. That much is enough. Let's see the leaderboard. Good Adi, you are studying. Okay, topper is Adi followed by Pragadish, Sujit, Paul and Deepa Karan. Let's get into the next question. Which of the following currencies is not included in the special drawing, right, uh, drawing rights currency basket? This is comparatively a very easy question. Uh, the special drawing rights can, you know, you can find it frequently asked in prelims in one form or the other, either in question or in answer. In economics means you can definitely expect a question from SDR. Good, many of you have answered it correctly. Swiss franc is not that. There are only four current currencies, Euro, British pound, Chinese renminbi and of course uh, US dollar and then there is yen also, sorry five. Let's see, the, that much is enough, just know it is paper gold, but it is neither paper nor gold, those stuff, SDR, what is this SDR, on those lines, know about it, who is offering it, World Bank or IMF, know all those things. Fine, let's see the leaderboard. Okay, topper is Adi, followed by Pragadish, Paul, Shankari and Sridhar. Okay, Divakar is back in the game, it seems. Fine, let's get into the next question. Consider the following statements about the International Labour Organization. A. It is a tri-party UN agency with government, employer and worker representatives created in 1919. B. India is a founding member of ILO. Fine, time is up. Mm, okay, some of you have answered it correctly. Few have you, few of you have thought, Apo, in 1990 there is no India. Then how can India be a founding member? But yeah, when we were British, uh, India also, well, we were like part of it. And uh, in 19, some in 1940, sometime it became uh, part of United Nations also after UN was created. So this organization was there even before United Nations was that United Nations was created after World War II, isn't it? So this is particular, this ILO is before that and this is the only tri-party organ, uh, organ of the UN. So that part you should know and India is a founding member, you should also know that part. So yes, that much is enough, just go through ILO's official website. Any UN organization or any organization always give preference to uh, going through the official website. That is the authentic source of information about that particular organization. Good, let's get into the leaderboard. Topper is Adi followed by Pragadish, Paul, Shankari and Mani. Good. Next question. Okay. The, with reference to the PM Vishwakarma scheme, consider the following statements. One, it is a central se sector scheme fully funded by the central government. 
2. It aims to provide end-to-end -end support to artisans and craftspeople. 3. Beneficiaries under the scheme are restricted to rural areas of the country. Good. The time is up. Many of you have answered uh, correctly. Good. These options itself is quite difficult, is it? Is this only one, only two? Okay, quite a few of you, many of you have answered it correctly. The answer is two statements. That is the first statement is correct. It is a central sector scheme. Any central sector scheme fully sponsored by the central government. Two, of course, end to end support to the artisans and crafts people. Three, it is not restricted only to the rural area. It is available to both urban and rural area. In this, um, you have to see what are the uh, are types of artisans that are around like uh, carpenter, boat maker, hammer and toolkit, you can just see who are those. Now what uh, professions are included in this, that much is enough and the ministry that implements it, that much is more than enough. Fine, let's see the leaderboard. The topper is Adi followed by Pragadish, Sankari, Paul and Mani. Okay, Kavya is back with an answer streak it seems. Good Kavya. Good, let's get into the next question. With reference to the sovereign gold bond schemes, consider the following statement. SGBs are bonds that are issued by the RBA on behalf of the government. 2. The value of the, these bonds is tied to the value of gold. 3. On redemption, the investor gets interest income and prevailing price of the gold. Which among the following are correct? Very good, many of you have answered, this correct, uh, answered it correctly. Uh, here you have to know that on the redemption of an SGB, you will not get gold, you will only get cash. That part you should know, you will never get gold. This is, uh, this was the issue, you know, this bond came uh, prima facie uh, to curb the import of gold. It, ha it holds the value of gold. In addition, it also gives you 2.5% of interest. So, of course, this is issued by RBI. So, only RBI can issue SGB. This part also you should know. Private players cannot issue SGB. Okay, it's very simple question. Uh, it or this also a previous year UPSC question paper. SGB was asked once. Let's see. Good. Many of you have answered it correctly. Let's see the leaderboard. Consistently, Adi is stopping, followed by Pragadish, Paul, Sujit, and Vinod. Good. Let's next question. With reference to Animal Welfare Board of India, consider the following statements. It is a statutory advisory body on animal welfare laws. Two, it was established under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Which among the following are correct? Fine, the answer is A only, but many of you have answered both 1 and 2. So, to answer such questions, uh, of course, this was not created under WPA 1972, rather it was created under Prevention of uh, Cruelty to Animals, that act, okay, Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act 1960. But you cannot read every act, every organization, isn't it? So, the simple trick would be you should know all the organizations that are created under WPA 1972. Just the five, National Parks, Wildlife Sanctuaries, uh, National Tiger Conservation Authority, uh, Crime Control Bureau and one more. No, only five of the, those are created under WPA. Learn those five. So, that wherever WPA comes, you can either answer uh, or eliminate that option. Now, that would be a smart way to go about uh, the statutory body questions. Okay, good. Let's see the leaderboard. Adi is stopping, followed by Pragadish, Paul, Sujit, and Vinod. Okay, Harsh 871 is back in the game, it seems. Final question. Identify who? The Tenneri inscriptions which bear testimony to the qualifications required for members of the village administrative council belongs to Cholas, Eastern Chalukyas, Hoyasalas, Satvahanas. Simple. Okay, this is Chola. It is as simple as that. This inscription Tenneri can also be called as the Uttra Merur inscription. Uh, interesting fact from that is that. Uh, 
it is in a temple called Kantaleshwara temple. Who built that temple was Sembian Mahadevi. We all, all who have seen Pony in Selvan will know who Sembian Mahadevi is. Uh, the queen built that temple and we can find Uttrameru inscriptions in that. Very, why this inscription is so important is that it mentions about a system called Kudavole system. That system is the pioneer system for democracy wherein people elect the members of the committee that is going to govern them or various aspects of the society. So that is why this Kudavole system is there. So that is why Uttrameru inscription has got prominence. So that's, that much is enough I think nowadays sholas are being you know it is very easy to remember with this uh, upcoming of the two parts of the movie. Good, we will see the final leaderboard. Third place is Paul, second place is Pragatish, and first place is Adi of course as expected. Good, all who have answered, good, those who have not answered, it's good that you are participating in the quiz and you know learning so many things, that itself is a progress, don't worry. Good guys, we'll see in some other quiz, thank you so much.